Yo ho ho, Psychosaurus is back, bringing you some more Age of Empires online. And guess what? Winter Island is here. Yay! <laughs> God. One thing that is definitely different is the the fortress soundtrack. Just listen to it. It's so different. So yeah, first of all, if you wanna get to the winter event, there should be one of these yetis near your Empire Stone at hometown, or there is one in Sparta, so go to one of those, they'll give you a quest, they'll send you here. And then you got a quest here. And well, let's do probably the easiest legendary quest I've played in this game, and it is the Candy King Korean. And I'm not joking, this quest is so damn easy and well rewarding. So let's get started. And oh boy. Okay, let's go, bring it on. Open up. Okay, give me that. I'm gonna do some hunting here. Okay, so you might know about Korean, the, one of the Twelve Kingdoms quests. That is the one where you cannot train anything but towns and units. Well, I made a video about that quest, or rather, it's a lead version and that you can actually train more than just your villagers. Well, the legendary version is not that annoying. You don't have that secondary objective here. Now if we go, pretty much train no caravans and finish it in time. We have 25 minutes for this one. Which is not that bad actually. It sounds like that you are supposed to work fast. You don't have to worry. It's not that that bad. Train of caravans again. It might sound really annoying, but it's not that bad because pretty much you got this water spot here, and you can just build your docks at the end and just go. And use the merchant transports. And that's it, that's your main source of the gold, uh, other than gold mining, obviously. So we're gonna use that as well. And build some tower here. So, another nice thing we can use fishing boats. I'll grab like two here. So why not? And oh boy, these guys went far. Go here and go hunting. So yeah, pretty much this whole quest is just go through like a long canyon which is surrounded by defensive structures and units and then just destroy the base. There's only one base. If you have ever played the normal or even elite Kurion, then you know that in that in those quests the enemy does not attack that much. The attacks are very small and it's just like the most basic units. It's the same deal here, so pretty much you don't have to worry about defense early. And you can just focus on your villager production. You can just get your villagers, get your economy running. That's pretty much it. 
I mean, you can also see these entrances, which just leads to these defenses up on the cliff. There's one entrance over here leading to like defenses over here. You can you can just destroy them when you feel like it. Okay, let's get some of these transports running. There's not much space, but because I'm playing alone, I should have enough space. But this can be a little bit annoying when you're playing as Babylonian with the space. So make sure to use your space as much as possible. Get the food running. You don't really need that a huge economy because the enemy does not attack that much, and not with the numbers, so you don't really have to replace that much until you start. Until you like try to go through this passage or this part of the valley. That's why it becomes very annoying. Just build up. Okay, we can do this. The dogs is the drop side. Okay, come on, finish the market. Gonna get the coinage, and we can. I can definitely sell some resources, that's why I'm focusing a lot on the food, so I can sell it and just get something else. Okay, I could have definitely used Silver Age. Okay, what are the main objectives? Destroy the fortresses, so there's one on the way, there are two defending, and then there are two in the base. Pretty much just fortified, which is a little bit annoying, but it's not that bad. And then also kill the, kill the Ice King. It wouldn't be the Winter Event without the Ice King, so... You gotta kill him here, as well. And he's by this fortress, he's right here. Somewhere, I don't know exactly, but he's there. Mm. Okay, see, first attack, what time is it? 7 minutes, it's just 2 spearmen. Not that bad. The thing is, that is scary about them is their bonus starts very high at 1.9, so. Careful a bit. The enemy is still a little bit stronger than it should be. That's fine. Okay, give me arm. This. 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 Have some of these upgrades. Why not? Can use these guys. That's a patrolling one. This quest actually is very easy if you're playing as Egyptian or Greeks because you get access to ballista or catapult. So like pushing through this is just get some. But they still get some kind of food, destroy the towers and just keep pushing, keep going. Now I'm playing as Norse, obviously I cannot do that. If I was playing it as Persian or Babylonian, I would obviously get access to the Huntington 
so you could like use polyfill as well. I'm playing as Norse and similarly as Skelts, I don't have Polytones. Instead I'm gonna use the throwers and using Teemo with throwers is actually pretty fun. The attack rate is just whoa, that's so nice. Just keep them throwing, yeah. Definitely do this, do this, and got the golden age. Get some more of these. Tonight nice. I can use my gold like this. Here comes another wave. This is why I got the tower here so I can take out these guys. Uh, I think I should have gone with Howard because then I would have some protection against the pierce damage for my hard jars. But oh well. How many do I have? Yeah, that, that should be enough. Nice thing about merchant transport is they carry so much more gold than caravans. I think it's about double, but I do not guarantee that. But the disadvantage is once you have like a lot of these, and you can see like this is issue here. They keep bumping into each other and that's making them a little bit less valuable than the, the caravans. Okay, took this. Grab some of these. I'm gonna use this, this, this. This. Meanwhile, we can grab this, add a fuse armor. Should be about time to start sieging. It's okay. We have enough time for that. Do this. Do some town centers. Do I need more wood? Nah, I kinda do. Okay, let's grab more stone. Send some spearmen this way. There are some programmers guarding this area. Grab some block throwers. Let's get it started. There they are, Boom snowman. Okay, we can do some damage over here as well. See the defense over here. Okay, I'm back. Okay, 
It's okay. We got these. This That's fine. Nah, nah. And this. And you guys. Okay. No need to go anywhere. Just destroy it slowly. Now obviously, if you have Palintons, you have greater range, so it's easier for you. You don't really need Nemo for this. If you have enough range. Can see some in place snowman here.
here and you over there. What about you guys? Come on over here. Okay, we're in. Take out, take out the siege. It's good time, four minutes remaining. Nothing to be worried about. Let's do this. There's the Ice King. again you guys do this you guys do this and that's it pretty much we're done here let's go for camps There you have it. Completely done. Pretty easy, right? Okay, we're gonna take the remaining chests, there's not that many left, so let's do this. Break the wall here. Guys, come on over here. So the chest. So you, you saw it. There's one on the right cliff, which you can enter from your base, your location. So it's up here. Second one. Once you get through this death valley. It's again on the right cliff, just behind here. We got this fortress here, you just go here. Next one is main base, you go to the right, it's up here. Go to the other one, and the last one is... Where did my units go? I told them to go over here, where are they? Well, you don't listen. Maybe because it's blocked. What do I know? Last just should be right here. There's this bottom fortress, so if you go through this gate over here, there's the last again. 
Okay, you got one more. Please, no man. Uh, gonna be here during the winter event. So if you find these doing legendary quest, yeah, they are weaker than these classic. What are they called? Raider chiefs. So yeah, that's four chests in total here. Come on, just die. Okay, let's go back. And yeah, so for, for the rewards... I don't know why this is ranked 2 stars. To be honest, I would rank this 1 star. Even half a star. Like, it feels like easier than... The Renegades, even. But what do I know? I will put it on the same level as Renegades. In my so for the rewards, 20 Empire points, 2500 points, 500 Winter points. That's actually a lot of points. It's gonna be important, I will show you why. Ice King's Hot Shots, 4 of these. It's very important if you wanna get the legendary exclusives. Three chests, that's a base, no caravans, some coins, two chests. So that's seven chests in total for this quest. I think that's really good reward. Okay, so I had to take a little break, so, so far nothing much. Eh, I don't really care. Eh, it's not great. So yeah, these shards are actually very important, you will need those, and for that there's this quest, a broken heart, you need 25 of the ice heart shards, you get one ice king's heart. Gods guard you, friend. And yeah, that consumes the shards, so you get 25, you pretty much trade them for one heart. Come, With this heart, you can get one of these items from this quest. So from last year we got here the Arrows of the Ice King, Sling of the Ice, those are actually already two years old, these two actually. These two state, for me if you want one of these two, I think arrows are really good. I like these arrows a lot, which is damage, maximum range and snare. I think you could see me using these arrows a lot, especially on my towers, some of my ranged units. The reason is very simple, like most of my ranged units just have huge range, so I put this one on them, they got the huge range there, they got the damage there. The snare, for me the snare is a little bit more defensive because it can slow down the enemy units and give you like, give your units time to run away, or in case of your towers it can maybe grant additional hit against the unit before it reaches the tower, so. For me it's a little bit more defensive stat for the ranged units and towers. If you don't like it, you don't like it. It's okay. But personally I like it a lot. Slings. These give pretty huge snare, so it's pretty much about slowing the enemy units. Personally I don't really like these. Slingers typically are used against ranged units, and like ranged units, you don't really care about slowing, slowing them. So the snare kind of feels useless there. The damage is a little bit lower, and the range is really good. The range is really good. The snare is, in my opinion, mainly used against the melee units like cavalry. So they don't reach your slingers. I don't know, personally I don't like this. I prefer my slingers to be as good against the ranged units as possible. The better they are, the more probable it is that they will use them. With this one, I don't really like this sling, personally. But if you like it, hey, go ahead. Okay, Greaves of the Ice King. This item was added last year, so it returns again. And this one, it's a replacement to the Master Assassin's Gauntlet or the Ramses, whichever you got right now. This one is more of a defensive, so preferably use this one on 
a unit that prefers the health rather than the damage. So which unit could that could this use? I think the most the best example would be the Persian Sparabara. Since that's a unit that you build defensively mainly. So giving it as much health as possible is great and when they die the movement speed helps you to replace them and get them to do battle faster so this is really great item for them I think even the Babylonian sh shield bearer is really good for this and then some other units which you might prefer build defensively such as the Greek hoplite this can be really good I think even the Norse Chief is a really great example because you want to keep him alive for as long as possible so this can definitely help. It's a really good item so I definitely recommend getting a few of these for some of those units you want to keep alive. Great item. Heavy Spear of the Ice King and the Javelin of the Ice King. These two are a new addition. So, so the Heavy Spear, Damage Snare... I don't think this is really good speed at all because snare on melee units is not really that useful especially when you consider the legendary ghost. The best thing I can think of where you could use the snare is like killing the enemy scout units you know those random units just going by right so just snaring them a lot can, can be good and so you can actually kill them but it's still it's not not really good for this. Like you don't really care about those. For me, the snare is, it's just not great. Okay, I don't think you really want these spears. I think it's better if you got the Halloween spears. It's already better. I think there are even better spears than this. It might look good. That's all I'm gonna say. It can look good. Other than that, I don't think you really want this. Javelin of the Ice King, which gives damage, maximum range, buildings bonus damage, and snare. Which is the same as the arrows. So this one... I'm not really, really gonna say, hey, get this or don't get this, because this is something... If you like it, go grab it. If you don't care, then don't care. You don't really need it. It's an interesting challenge in my opinion. When I consider the damage and range, it's definitely lower than what the Curse of the Archer offers. So it's definitely worse at that. And then it gives you the Billings bonus damage and snare. I would say this way. This is more of a... some kind of... Siege Javelin. So if you have Javelin unit and you wanna take out enemy buildings, then I think this is gonna be better for you than the Curse of the Archer. Because the overall damage output is actually it's actually even higher than the average damage output of Javelin of Sinuhe. And I don't know how much the pure damage javelin gives, but because this one offers the range. I think you're better with this javelin than the pure epic javelin, pure damage epic javelin. So, in my opinion, this is a siege javelin. Use it against buildings. I think that's the best usage I can see. I already got few of these. I tested one on the Persian Takabaras. It was pretty good, actually. They, they did a lot of damage to buildings. Not that they are great against buildings, but damn, it was interesting. So I think this javelin can have some usage. The snare also can help your units keep the distance, just like with the arrows. So I think it works really nicely. And because you're trading the damage from the other javelins for this one, the snare should help you take out the enemy units. A little bit better without any losses. So I think this is pretty okay, Javelin. If you like it, go ahead. If you don't care, don't care, like I said. It's your choice. Now for these quests, you obviously got the 
last year quests, which are these mini quests, which are these legendaries. So if you wanna, if you wanna see how to do these, I already made made these quests last year. So if you watch it, I'll leave the link for the whole playlist in the video. I think that one also includes the changes to the advisor. So <laughs> if you're interested those changes that happened last year go ahead you can watch those and then obviously we got three new legendary quests so you could just watch the Kurion now we got also Marion let's be honest this is literally Marion it's just a little bit more annoying I would say a little bit more hot a little bit more harder than my normal Marion so it's not that difficult. If you can beat Marion, you can beat this one. And the uh, questing in woods on a snow snowy evening. This one, I don't know. Why this one is three stars, to be honest. <laughs> it can be annoying early a little bit, but it's like three stars. I know three stars quests that deserve it, but this one, nay. Nah. And then obviously you get some bonus quests for killing the snowman. The snowman in the tre treasure camps, okay, not the snowman you find in quest. So that's this one. See, I got, I got these. I don't, I didn't get any for those small ones. I got just from the camps. And obviously, beating legendary quest. There's also separate for repeatables and elite quests. Which one is it? This one. And so, if you want to play some elite quest, go ahead. You can get. Some additional shots here. Obviously, these these offer additional points as well, as well as one more shot. And obviously, the one for the heart. Oh yeah, one more thing. You have to pay one heart for each item, and that's only for the first three. Then one item costs two hearts, and then you get a repeatable version where you have to pay three hearts per item so if you wanna get as many items as possible try to spread it across the sieves so if you have so you can do like three as Norse, three as Greeks, three as Egyptians and it will cost you one heart each so do it like that first then go for the two hearts and then you have no other choice now obviously you're getting the Winter points, which you can use here in the gingerbread goodies. Oh boy, that's the name of the store. So here you can get an another legendary item, which is from last year as well, uh, just like the Greaves, which is the horse armor of the Ice King, which gives health, minus training time, and snare resist. I don't really care about this armor, so if you like it, go ahead. I'm not really gonna give you advice, but I'm not really gonna give you advice about this one that much. Other than that, it's good when you're ignoring the enemy army and don't want your units to get snared. So I think that's the best example I can give right now. So pretty much you can put this on, let's say, elephants, and you can ignore the enemy spearmen. Your elephants will be a little bit immune to their snare so that's probably the best I can say about this one. Also on elephants you get the train time and their train time is pretty huge. It's a small number so it's not gonna be that huge difference but it's there as a bonus. Now what do we have here? We got some winter chest 15 points for level 10 one it might be actually interesting there is a level 10 item you might want to get. I don't really care about it, but it's there. 20 points for level 20, 25 for level 30, 60 points for level 40, and then 200 for large chest, which is level 40. I've tried few of these, and well, not these exactly. You know, I tried few in Creed, I believe, and those just have better chance to give you better rewards. It, it's more like you get buying one of those legendary chests 
from legendary quests here. Now the next one, this is actually something you might want to get. And that's the Ice King Stronghold, which is just like in Halloween and Summer event, you had this one building, you would get it, you would build it in your home city, you would get the event quests once the event was done. So pretty much this is the winter equivalent of those. It costs 15,000 points. Uh, let me just say, you get you, you get 500 points per legendary quest. So if you're beating these legendary quests without any issue, you can get quite a lot of points just by by playing like just just by playing free quests, you get like 1,500 points. So that's 10% of one of those strongholds. So. I don't think it's gonna be that hard getting those strongholds. The thing is that right now it costs five Ice Kings heart to build, to build. So even if you have it, you still have to fight. You still have to get all those Ice Kings hearts. And one Ice King heart, you saw it is 25 shards. So that's a lot of shards. Oh boy. But it. It's possible that this might get changed soon, so the price is not that high because five hearts. Oh boy, it's just a lot of farming you're gonna do, and when you when you realize you also want to get those items, it fe it feels really overpriced. It, it's all overpriced a lot. Like, no way. Right right now, well, for me it's not a Bad because I already got some items from last year, but when a new player starts playing and you want to get one of these as well, that's just a huge price. So I think it's gonna get lower because it's too much. I'm not gonna show you one because I don't have enough hearts to build one right now. Next, we got some decorations so large igloo, medium igloo, small igloo, those are just normal houses, and gingerbread. Residences. I think these were added last year and these were added two years ago. You got the winter warehouse, which is nice building. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think I got one of these. The snow fort, I got one of those somewhere, I don't know where. And you can see it in uh, Legendary Quest Winter Wonderland. One of these you can see them there. It's just like it's like a little bit bigger tower with a snowman at the top, at the tops, looking, looking out, like guarding the area. Yeah. Then we got obviously some vanity gear, some ice, ice gear, winter gear, and then some consumables. So frost fortress, abominable snowman. Yeah, so, so something you can spawn during the quest for the mercenaries. They're not that expensive actually, like one legendary quest you can afford like one of these, few of these, few of these. It's not that bad. So if you wanna get those consumables, don't do that, but if you want, hey it's there. For, for the vanity you obviously get this, these showcases, so we got the what do you call it? Winter. And here you got the ice. I like the sword. You might saw some of my champions using the sword. There's the Ice King. If you're looking for him here. I think I took, I took a look around here last year, so yeah, yeah, it's just a nice city. Just so you know, the Rudolph is still here, you can move him around. Getting attacked by some of those bears there, and obviously there's Bahram as well, right here. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I think that the legendary quest I showed you very easy. You can do it in less than 30 minutes. So I recommend farming this one. It's very easy. Just go ahead. Use some of those throwers. Use some of those palantons. I, I think you kind of have to because otherwise you don't really have a chance like getting through that fast 
and with the enemy defenses there oh boy you don't you want to take it slow you want to do it fast so throwers, spalling drones, ballista catapults whichever you like use it you're allowed in this version of Korean get those points buy your stuff here get the hearts get your gear get the strongholds that's all I'm gonna say for now so yeah I'm gonna do the two other quests soon enough so yeah, if you enjoyed this, make sure to click the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. I'm streaming on Twitch sometimes, so make sure to follow me there. Follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter. Yeah, all, all the links will be in the description. If you want to see the last year quest, I'll be doing some stream hopefully soon to revisit those quests. Other than that, there's a there's gonna be a playlist in the description as well. So if you wanna watch it right now, hey, go ahead. So yeah, this was Psychosaurus. I know it's with delay, but Merry Christmas and definitely Happy New Year. Yeah, hopefully it's not gonna be that bad as this year, but who knows? You never know. So yeah, see ya next time. Bye.